Okay, hi you guys. Um, remember, I told you that you should trace this backwards and that you would understand later the reason why. Picked a really bad time for my battery to go out on my uh, on my phone, so I didn't videotape the the tracing of this, which is I you know thrill packed. But um, I traced this, so I showed you a before picture and an after picture of how I did this, utilizing that T-square, utilizing any kind of straight edge to make sure that those lines are perfect. And as you see in the image that I sent you, this is traced perfectly backwards. There's a reason for that. And that's what I'm gonna show you right now. So I'm taking all of these pieces of tape off of this thing. So now I'll be able to move it so now I have my tracing all by itself. Take off the comp and lay that over here with the photo. When I was doing the tracing, I was also editing. I was saying, mm, this line is doesn't look right. This shape isn't in the right place. All of that stuff. I know that I want to add more negative space, so I'm just going to turn this over put it right here. You see my tracing, the graphite is on this side of the paper. When I lay this down onto my illustration board, I'm graphite side down. I check everything and make sure that I'm doing this exactly the way that I want. Then I tape it down. And it's really important to keep that tape down to your board so that there is no movement. Um, now, after doing all that work, I'm going to take a 2H pencil um, just because it's hard, but I'm not going to burnish down this way. You don't want to make any grooves in your board. So you're just going to take with the side of the pencil and rubbing over this is going to put all of these lines down on my illustration board. That's why we turned it backwards. Otherwise it becomes a really redundant process and it gets lots of graphite. So this is just trying to get all of this transferred to my board. I can determine size after this because I have plenty of room on the piece of illustration board that I cut out. It's much larger than the original. So it gives me room to utilize in the composition. I know this is pretty thrilling, um, but You'll be able to see what happens in this process. And this way, by going like this, I'm making sure that I'm hitting every line that I put onto that page. It's important. You spend a lot of time on this. And that's, that's the prep work. All art is, is prep work and execution, prep work and execution. I don't care what it is that you're making. That could be sculptural, anything, but the prep is really important, particularly in design. So we have a language in art, a visual language, and that's the way that I like to think of this class is a language-based class. We're learning a new language. This is an abstraction. There aren't any straight lines on people normally. And everything here is a straight line. So it's gonna teach you a way of developing an abstraction, making sure that you got this down. Now, before I move these pieces of tape that are at the top, 
I'm going to take off this one at the bottom and this one at the bottom just so I can lift this up and see that, yep, everything that I needed has transferred over here to this page. So that's exactly what I want you to do. Now I know what, what to ink and what not to ink. I've got my image. I can come in here and now instead of the Tombow pin on our lines, we're going to be using the Micron pins. These pins, <clears throat> these are very important to this. These are waterproof ink and dark and rich as uh, India ink. So you're really lucky. In my day, we didn't have these kinds of things and we had to use ruling pins. So I'll show you that another time. But this is a wonderful tool. Okay, cut.